I've got a nice problem to show everyone today. So we want to take 90 numbers written as A1, A2, up to A90 that can take on two different values. Those values are the square root of 3 minus 1 and the square root of 3 plus 1. Then, after we have those 90 numbers, we'll set capital A to be this sum of pairwise products. And so, in particular, it'll be A1 times A2 plus A3 times A4 plus, the next one will be A5 times A6 plus ending at A90, A89 times A90. And the question that we'll answer, well, the first question that we'll answer, and then we'll extend this question a little bit once we've answered it, is that is it possible that this number is equal to 100 by cleverly choosing these little a's? Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So the first thing that I want to notice is that there are only three possible values of these pairwise products. So let's notice those three values. So three possible values of, I'll write it as AI, AI plus one. Great. So the first thing that you could have is the square root of three minus one squared. And so that would be if AI equals AI plus one and they both equal this first one. So you can multiply out this square root of three minus one squared and what you'll get is four minus two times the square root of three. And so let's maybe go ahead and point out that that's if AI equals AI plus one equals root three minus one. And then we could have the case where one of them is root three minus one and the other one is root three plus one. And in that case, we've got something that's like a difference of squares. So we'll have square root of three squared minus one squared, that'll be the number two. And then finally, we'll have the case when they are both equal to the square root of three plus one. And similar to this first one, that will be four plus two times the square root of three. And so let's fill in, this is the case when AI is not equal to AI plus one. But since they come from this set of two elements, then we know that one of them is one of these and the other one is the other one. Okay, and then finally, this is when AI equals AI plus one equals root three plus one. Okay, so those are our three values here. Next up, let's set L equal to the number of four minus two root threes in the sum of A. So notice that since each of these is one of those, we can count up how many times four minus root three occurs, and we'll call that L. Likewise, we can count up the number of times the number two occurs, and we'll call that M. So we'll say the number of times two occurs in the sum, we'll say that's equal to m. And then finally, the number n will be the number of times that four plus two root three occurs in the sum. So each of these numbers over here has to be one of these three values here. We've labeled the number of times each occurs L, M, N, and notice that immediately gives us L plus M plus N equals, let's see, it must be equal to 45. And so why does it have to equal 45? Because we've got 90 total numbers, but we're taking chunks of two, kind of disjoint chunks of two and adding them up. 90 divided by two is 45. Okay, nice. Another thing that we know is that four minus two root three times L plus two M plus four plus two root three times N must be equal to 100. That's because our sum A is, our goal is for it to be equal to 100. Okay, so now let's simplify this a little bit. Maybe we can see that this is the same thing as 4L plus 2M plus 4N plus the square root of three times, let's see, what will it be? N, 2N minus 2L equals 100. 
Okay, but notice there's no square roots of three on the right hand side, which means this expression right here must be equal to zero, but that expression being equal to zero tells us that n must be equal to L. So that's nice because that simplifies a little bit of what we're working with. So instead of having L plus M plus N equals 45, we in fact have M plus, let's see, what will it be? 2 times N equals 45. That's the simplification after that observation. Great. And then we have a similar simplification here after that observation. Again, since n is equal to L, we have 4n plus 4n, that'll be 8n plus 2m, or maybe we'll write that as 2m plus 8n equals 100 in this case. Okay, so now we've got a system of two equations and two unknowns that we can hopefully solve for m and n. Okay, so let's maybe bring that stuff to the top and then we'll answer this starting question and then move on to a more general question. Okay, let's recall where we were on the last board. We said that m was the number of times two occurred in this expression a, n was the number of times the four minus two times the square root of three or four plus two times the square root of three occurred in A. We argued that those had to be the same. And then we built the following system of equations. We have M plus two N equals 45. And then we also have 2m plus 8n equals 100. Let's maybe take this first equation and multiply it by two just so that it's a little easier to use to simplify this second equation. So that'll give us 2m plus 4n equals 90. Great. And now what can we do from here? I'd like to take that second equation and subtract the first equation. So 2m minus 2m is 0, 8n minus 4n is 4n, and then 100 minus 90 is 10. But notice this clearly has no solution. So this has no solution with n in natural numbers. Because n must be in the natural numbers for this expression, the only solution would be n equals five halves. But you can't have this guy right here occurring two and a half times in this sum right here. It must occur one time, two times, three times, or perhaps zero times. But anyway, you can't have it occur five and a half times. Okay, so that means there's no solution to this. So let's maybe put that here. The answer to this question is a resounding no. Okay, but I think using this structure, we can decide when this type of thing is possible. So let's maybe do that now. So I'll just maybe put note. If we want to only look at the case when A is a natural number and then answer the question, when is it possible to achieve the sum A, then we can just rewrite this system of equations with instead of 100 here, an a there. So let's rewrite this system of equations. So we'll have 2m plus 8n equals a, and then we'll have 2m plus 4n equals 90. So I wrote it in a slightly different order, but that's the same. But now subtracting these two equations, we clearly see that 4n equals a minus 90. So that tells us there is a solution if and only if um, a minus 90 is a multiple of four. But in the language of congruence mod four, that means this is congruent to zero mod four. So let's look at maybe the simplest case, or one of the simplest cases, and that would be a equals 110. So let's say that a equals 110 is possible. And then let's exhibit a solution for that on the next board. So we determined that this kind of thing is only possible if a minus 90 is congruent to zero mod four. I think you could maybe rewrite that as saying that a must be congruent to two mod four, but that's just by simple modular arithmetic. Any way you look at it, the number of 110 is possible. 
So since the number 110 is possible, let's exhibit an actual solution to that. So here we'll take a difference of these equations like we've been doing, and we'll see that means 4n equals 20, which in turn means n equals 5. Okay, but n equals 5 means there are 5 terms like this in the sum, 4 minus 2 root 3, and 5 terms like this, 4 plus 2 root 3 in the sum. But let's recall, in order to achieve that, we need the square root of 3 minus 1 squared or the square root of 3 plus 1 squared, which means we need 10 things in a row that are equal to the square root of 3 minus 1 and then also the square root of 3 plus 1. So let's maybe take the first 10, a1 equals a2 equals all the way up to a10 to be equal to the square root of 3 minus 1. And then we'll notice that means a1, a2 equals a3, a4 equals all the way up to a9, a10 equals, let's see, 4 minus 2 root 3. And then similarly, we'll take a11 equals a12 all the way up to a20 to be the square root of 3 plus 1. And this will give us a11 times a12 equals a13 times a14 equals all the way up to a, let's see, 19, a20 equals 4 plus 2 root 3. So again, these are five objects equal to four minus two root three, another five objects equal to four plus two root three. Then finally, we need to alternate between these two numbers from here to the end to achieve this like M value, which in this case would be 35 copies of two. And so in order to do that, we'll have something like this a21 equals a23 equals a25 all the way up to a89 equals the square root of 3 minus 1. And then likewise a22 equals a24 equals a26 all the way up to a90 equals the square root of 3 plus 1. But now we've got that conjugation kind of operation occurring when we take these pairwise products. So a21 times a22 equals a23 times a24 all the way up to a89 times a90 equals 2. So we've got 35 copies of this 2, we've got 5 copies each of those. Putting that all together, we can achieve the number 110. And that's a good place to stop.